Hello there and welcome to the Card Grotto. Today I'm creating some simple alcohol ink backgrounds with alloys. So I'm starting off by having a piece of Yupo paper here. This is the Tim Holtz Ranger Yupo and I am adding some alcohol ink blending solution on it first and then I'm dropping in dots of alcohol ink and I'm using the colours Cobalt, Laguna and Mermaid. The Mermaid and the Laguna ended up being pretty much very similar. They're not quite. Uh, Mermaid has got a little bit more brightness to it but um, I had planned on them being slightly different but I left it in the end because I thought it still looked quite nice just with sort of mainly two colours. And I'm, I started off by using the Ranger Air Blower tool and um, this is the first time I've used it. I purchased it some time ago and um, quite a few months ago and I'd meant to do a video on it way before now. Um, unfortunately I just due to sickness and things like that I just haven't been able to. Um, I found it was a little bit um, big on my hands um, so I went back to the kind of air spritzing tool that is used with the distress markers and I found it a little bit easier but later on in the video I do go back to that air blower tool and I kind of got a bit used to it as time went on it, like I said it's a little bit bigger in my hand but it does blow really nicely and you get more kind of air through it than that um, spritzing tool which is you know kind of the point since um, that spritzing tool isn't made to do that um, I just had it before I started using alcohol ink so um, I added in some of the alloy, I used the sterling colour which is the silver and I it ended up being a bit blobby, again this is the first time I've used the alloys um, since I um, purchased them so I wanted to see how different they were to the mixatives and at this point I wasn't particularly convinced that they were that much different although they do tend to blend a bit easier with the alcohol inks. I added some blending solution over the top once I had added them onto my panel and that kind of just helped sort of move them around but it did end up a bit blobby but on my next panel I kind of got the look that I wanted to so it's all about experimenting with these kind of things. So that's my first panel. The next panel I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol rather than the blending solution just adding that on with a pipette just to kind of wet the Yupo paper and then I'm going to go in with the boysenberry vineyard and raspberry this ended up being a lot more kind of purple I want <laughs> I wanted it to be purple but I wanted to have a little bit more variation it ended up being fairly one color but I do really like how the alloy worked with it so this time I added the alloy straight away before I kind of pushed any of the color around and I think that that helped a lot better than moving the color around first and then adding the alloy on top so I'm using that air blower tool like I said I'm getting a bit more used to it at this point it is a little bit bigger in my hand so sometimes I'm having to use two hands to use it but that's absolutely fine I added a lot more colour onto this one. I think the isopropyl alcohol tends to move the colour a bit more. As you can see, it's quite there's quite a lot on the outside of my panel here. You can re-wet that and kind of dunk your piece into it, like if you were to do like ink smushing. Um, and that worked really well to kind of not waste any of that extra alcohol ink. I'm going back in with that mind colour the of the alloy, and that's a really pretty kind of rose gold colour. And this is how I wanted it to look look kind of like lines in it if that makes sense and then I'm just splattering on I'm actually using the alcohol ink blending solution for this since I had some left and I didn't really want to waste that so just kind of splattering that on to create some more interest on the panel I'm just looking here to make sure that it's how I want it to be and I really as I said I really liked how this one worked with the alloys and it kind of just gives a little bit like if you were to foil with alcohol inks um, just adds that kind of foiling line sort of metallic line which I thought was really really pretty and this is the first panel I did like I said it kind of went a bit blobby but actually I do think it works still quite nicely so I didn't want to um, get rid of the panel or anything like that and like I said this is all about experimentation Next I'm taking the new paper hugs die from the Simon Says Stamp December release and I've cut that six times from white cardstock and I'm just popping out all of the inside pieces with a pokey tool here 
and then I'm going to stack them one on top of another so I want to have a three high for each card I think it's just nice to have that kind of extra stability so I'm just taking some Hero Arts Precision glue here and I'm just going to adhere them all on top of another I did think about using stick it adhesive for the backs of these but because the letters are quite thick um, you can get glue in quite easily and I tend to save my stick it adhesive for things that are a little bit more intricate so just adding the glue over that and then I can pop the first piece on I think two works really nicely just to give that stability but I am going to go with the three just because my cards are going to be very kind of simple in design so going back in with that precision glue again adding that all across that uh, die cut there and then I can add the top one on top and I really like just having the white against the colorful background I'm then going to go in with that pokey tool again just to make sure that I haven't got any glue kind of seeping out the edges. I do like using the liquid glue for this though because you've got some room to kind of wiggle them make sure that they're lined up really nicely. And then I'm just going to go around all of the letters and the inside of the letters just to get rid of any excess little bits of paper that you happen to have when you're die cutting. Next I'm going to stamp an accompanying sentiment. This is from the Tiny Words support set. I originally thought that I was just going to add this onto one of my cards. In the end I did add it to both. If I'd known that at the time I would have stamped them both at the same time but I'm just stamping the one purely because I wasn't sure what I was doing at that point. So I'm inking that up with Versamark ink stamping that down onto some Hero Arts Pitch Black cardstock and then I'm going to apply some Wow Bright White Super Fine Embossing Powder adding that on, tapping off the excess and then I can funnel that back into the jar with the coffee filter and I always manage to get some on my craft mat, whatever I do uh, so I'm just wiping that away and then I can heat set that sentiment until it's completely melted and I like to heat set from the front and the back especially with these tiny little sentiments I don't add, like to add too much heat to it just using a Swiffer cloth to get rid of any of the excess powder tool and then I can cut that down into a strip using the Simon Says Stamp. These are the sentiment label dies. Just running that through my Gemini Mini here. And then I can cut the edges down with a guillotine once I've figured out how long I want the strip to be. So next I've got two A2 sized white card bases. So these are four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. I've added quite a lot of foam tape onto the back of my UPO pieces because although the UPO is fairly sturdy, it's not as sturdy as cardstock. I didn't use the thicker kind of UPO. I just used the general one. And so I want to make sure that I give it really nice stability behind that layer. So just adding that on. I did use a bit of glue stick behind the foam tape and that again just helps me to have a little bit of a wiggle room I don't really like to add the liquid glue onto that although this technically is liquid glue I don't really like to add the liquid glue on it because I think it adds a little bit too much moisture so I like to go in with the glue stick there and then I'm going to add on the die cut with the liquid glue so just adding that all around I want to make sure that I kind of get every little piece of that make sure that it's going to stick down really nicely onto those cards and then I'm again taking that pokey tool just to remove any excess glue and then I can stick those down onto the panels so just using some tweezers just to help me out with the placement. I apologise for my big head getting in the way but I wanted to make sure that it was centred. Or at least centred as much as I could manage in the video. And just doing the exact same thing for the other one. I do like that there's a line in between the paper and the hugs. I do kind of cover that up with my accompanying sentiment and I think it looks nice either way. So just placing that down and then I'm just adding some acrylic blocks over the top of that just while the glue dries it's going to make sure that that sticks really nicely 
and then I can add some tape runner onto the back of my sentiment strips like I said I just cut these sides down a little bit I like I said I wanted to cover that line in between the paper and the hug so I wanted them to be long enough for that but I didn't want them to kind of go across the whole of the card so just re removing any of the excess glue there and then I can just use a t-square ruler just to help me make sure that that's straight and then just sticking that down in between the paper and the hugs and I thought these would be really nice to send to some crafty friends so that's the cards finished for today I think that they turned out quite kind of clean and simple alcohol inks are generally never clean but um, you still get kind of the look of a clean and simple card and I really like how those alloys worked with the alcohol inks and I'm definitely going to use those a lot more links to the products that I used will be in the description bar on YouTube and also over on my blog thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon